name's John Cordy, and in this clip, you're going to watch me watch myself record what you just saw. Uh, so a lot of people ask me from time to time how it is that I go about recording my clips or put together what I'm doing. So this is literally what happened uh, during this session. So I just set this camera recording, uh, the one that you're seeing from, and this is what I'm doing in the room. So you see I've prepped the camera in the bot right, bottom right hand corner. Um, that's the thing that does the angle that you see of my playing most of the time. And I'm getting the guitar ready. I've set up a track and I've just set a random click. I think in this case it ended up being, I can just check, uh, I can't just check. I think about 112 BPM, something like that. And um, this particular process might be a bit different if I was specifically trying to get something out of a, a piece of gear. Um, but generally what I'm trying to do on the channel, I don't know if you've noticed, is just play guitar and enjoy it. So set a clip going and then whatever happens, happens. Uh, so at this point, I think I'm trying to set the tempo of the HX stomp. Um, and then I just start laying down something and I'm generally just thinking what key am I starting in and then the rest of it, it's just whatever happens. So generally I've got some conscious idea about how these things are going to loop over each other. Um, and that's kind of what I enjoy doing these days. So that's the start, that's how I start off most of my tracks generally, just me, a clip and some clean guitar. You see I've stopped the camera recording and then the process that you're about to watch is me chopping that into loops. So uh, generally two, four bar loops and layering them over each other. So generally I don't use a real looper, I just do it with this process as I find it just an easier way to do things and I've got more flexibility with the tracks this way. I think you can see on the screen that I'm chunking stuff across. And then that becomes my backing track essentially for whatever comes next. Um, then there's some production stuff. I think uh, the more you do this sort of thing, the more you realize that it makes sense to have templates. Like uh, probably you yourselves have sounds that you generally use a lot for stuff. Um, and like for me, there's certain production techniques that I use over and over. So what you're seeing here is something that I do most days. And um, this is just part of what I do to make things sound how I want them to sound. You don't hear any processing on the tracks at all. This is just additional stuff alongside. And I think next I'm gonna add in the bass line, I think. Um, Or I might record another guitar part. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I've already forgotten. Um, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that it's a pile of hats and also a mirror which faces into the middle of the room but just gives me the feeling of space. <laughs> so now I'm programming in a drum beat. So I use Native Instruments um, Contact and I'm using Superior Drummer here. So this is something I've done since I was about 15, 16, so it doesn't really feel like anything other than playing. So I program them in with a piano roll. Sometimes I'm a bit more adventurous in terms of writing rolls and stuff and fills, but um, since I was trying to do this one uber quickly, that wasn't a consideration. And uh, like hopefully you get the idea, but so um, templates, I use templates for the production of the actual drums as well. So it's something that I've mixed ahead of time so that I don't have to do that for every single project. 
um, and then I think I'll copy that whole chunk across so that I've got something to improvise over further um, and possibly I might write a bass line or maybe I'm, I'm going to record the rhythm part now so I set the camera recording I think you might have spotted an ugg boot there don't worry they don't leave the house often um, changing it the HX stomp to be on a rhythm preset and so now I'm recording my next layer and that's a full stop right, Fenton Fenton's just come into my room so I didn't like that part so I just start again this new kind of idea came to my head so I recorded it as we were going so with all of this stuff my consideration generally is am I playing the sound that I'm hearing if that makes sense so you know if I'm playing a Vox AC30 would I end up playing this sort of thing no but um, creatively, this is where these sounds kind of have led me. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm layering up the rhythm guitar parts. And because I played the exact same thing twice on the rhythm guitar part, I think I panned one hard left and one hard right, and then the additional stuff straight in the middle, I think, is what I'm doing. Um, and now I think I'm about to record the solo, I think. So once I've got that, the, the next stage is to just sit and play guitar. So this is the main thing that I like to do. Um, so So I guess one of the important things when you're recording is to be able to stay in time hopefully. So that's why I have the click relatively loud. I don't necessarily know how long these things are going to go on for. Other times maybe I might um, put some different changes in in the middle of the track or a bit where it kind of has some more variety but the process is always the same. And I like to give myself a longer track rather than a shorter track just in case uh, the moment kind of takes me and I end up recording something longer than I'd initially planned. It's always better to have more to play with um, rather than a track just running out as you are getting into it. So um, it won't always be a first take, but generally uh, I don't tend to, um, what's the word, you know, try and be a perfectionist about this. Uh, I'm trying to represent realistically how I play guitar. I never really wanted it to be the case that someone might be surprised by how different my playing was, like live or in real life, as to what it is when you see me playing on YouTube. Uh, so. That's why the decision has been for me to focus on kind of improvised and spontaneous music. Um, I don't know whether that's to the detriment of 
other things like maybe if I'd written stuff it'd be more interesting but I don't know this is where we are at the moment so I think now uh, I'm working on um, the bass line so I use Native Instruments Re Reactor I think it's called for most of my bass stuff um, I generally don't bother to play in real bass lines anymore uh, just because it takes more time and I don't necessarily get better results If it's a jazz bass line, I'll generally play it in with a keyboard or with a guitar and then pitch that an octave down. And sometimes I like to kind of double up the, the bass line so you get two, like one maybe like a more uh, aggressive synth bass and one might just be a smooth synth bass. It's one of the things I like to do. saving the project there. Uh, sometimes I forget to save it and that's obviously not smart. Uh, here's Liana calling me. Uh, right, I said I couldn't speak because I'm in the middle of this. that in the middle of it. So I think I'm now adding in like little swells of percussion type stuff, uh, something that I kind of like to do to add some excitement in a way. And now adding in a, a drum fill for this particular process I might spend a bit more time on and do a bit more variety in the drum part depending on what I was doing um, but I don't necessarily think it's always that essential to have you know crazy drum parts and then I think I'm copying across those uh, kind of eight bar drum patterns. Turn it off the camera. And then this is like one of the last things that I like to do is maybe add uh, additional guitar parts just to accent um, certain melodies or something or just to add a bit of interest. So here I am trying to find little bits which would maybe suit a harmony guitar part or an octave above. I think I'm looking for additional parts that might require some 
spice. So I thought that last line in, in particular. Sometimes with the harmonies, it's a case of just trying to um, experiment with what might work. Obviously, there's octaves, there's fifths, there's thirds, and then combinations of all of those. And I, I try to pick something that might sound a little bit interesting. Um, dog barking I think that's me done for now and then it's just a case of bouncing that down and that's basically how I create a track from start to finish or a clip or whatever it is that I do here um, and yeah I guess thank you for watching um, if this was at all interesting you could do the old like and subscribe thing um, and that's that's the process cheers